Hi, I'm Kendall with the Rawls Group. The old African proverb, it takes a village, illustrates the essential nature of a team approach to succession planning. Succession planning is a complex endeavor. As such, it requires leveraging the expertise of a diversity of backgrounds. Collaboration and different expert opinions provides a 360 degree approach, ensuring the possible, probable, and potential issues impacting your long-term vision are addressed. To provide insight into common questions received from business owners, we are leveraging the village of our valued strategic relationships. As you listen to this episode, you'll be able to immediately apply the key takeaways and you'll come back for more. Now we're going to focus on, what are some items to consider as businesses start to reopen? I believe there are three important steps to consider. The first step is how to get employees safely back to work. This will include what screening steps the company takes, whether that's temperature checks, whether that's employee questionnaires that disclose whether they're suffering from any conditions that could be related to COVID. It includes PPE and what PPE will be provided to employees, whether that would be face masks, protective face coverings, or, or similar type uh, equipment that will help keep employees safe. You also need to consider if you can reconfigure the workplace uh, to help ensure social dis distancing. This could be offices, open air offices, it could be break rooms, anything that will, will help prevent people from being within six feet of each other for extended periods of time is something that employers should consider. You also need to consider any industry specific guidance from OSHA, the CDC, or any applicable state organizations. Second important step to consider is determining a protocol for handling exposure. It's inevitable that employees are going to be exposed and, and most likely you're going to have some employees test positive. So you need to have an idea how you're going to handle a positive test. And, and one part of that is informing employees if they ever are positive or think they're positive, they don't need to come to work. Um, and once they are positive, you'll need to have a protocol in place for when they can come back to work and what is the process for getting them back to work. You also need to consider employees who've been exposed to a person who tests positive for COVID and what steps you need to take with them. There's very specific guidance from the CDC on what you're, you need to do depending on your industry. And you'll need to read that and understand that because there are certain steps that must be taken. You also need to consider how you're going to handle customers who may have been exposed. Is this something that you want to reach out to them? Is this something you'd want to call them about, write a letter? Would you just want to notify a local health organization that certain persons have been exposed? All these are, are considerations that need to be on the front end because when this does happen, it, it can be very stressful and, and time is of the essence. Lastly, you need to understand the applicable laws. There are a number of laws that could apply to returning to work. One is the new Families First Corona Response Act. This generally applies to employers under 500 employees. This provides leave for employees who are sick or caring for someone who's sick or need to be off work due to um, childcare issues. And there's two components of that. There's the Paid Sick Leave Act and there's the Emergency Family Medical Leave Act. And while they're different laws and they cover different types of leave, you need to be familiar with both those if you're a covered employer. You also need to consider the Americans with Disabilities Act. A person who's disabled and may be at higher risk to, to catching COVID or, or being susceptible to illness if they get COVID may need accommodations at work. And that's something you'll have to consider. You'll have to also have to consider the Family Medical Leave Act. Employees need to be off work because they're sick with COVID. That could be covered leave under the Family Medical Leave. You also have to consider your policies and any leave or pay time off policies that could be applicable to employees who have COVID or exposed to COVID. Lastly, you'll want to consider any state or local laws or rules that could apply to this situation. If you take those three steps, hopefully you'll have a successful return to work. This is Corey Bennett with Bennett Thrasher. Uh, I am an audit partner and co-lead of our restaurant hospitality practice here at the firm. Uh, we were asked to uh, address a couple of questions specific to the franchise industry um, and wanted to uh, address those this morning. Um, the, the first question is, what are some items to consider as businesses start to reopen? Uh, I think the most uh, important is just the health and safety of both your employees and your um, and your customers. Uh, there's a lot of 
a lot of regulation, a lot of uh, requirements to reopen um, that are mostly state mandated. And, uh, you know, I think it's important to make sure you understand all of those uh, to ensure that you're complying with those whenever you uh, start to consider reopening your business. Um, you know, obviously that's uh, from a risk management perspective, you know, adhering to all of those is, is uh, paramount. And so making sure that you're able to do that is very important. Um, yeah, I do think that there, you know, a lot of businesses in Georgia in particular are reopening or have reopened and uh, understanding, you know, what are the processes that are needed in case of certain things were to happen, such as an employee were to catch COVID. Uh, what does that mean and how do you navigate that uh, in this current environment? So. I think it's very important to make sure you have some uh, processes and a, a good plan in place and then communicate that to everyone to make sure everyone's adhering to the, the rules and regulations that are needed. So I, I think that's important, the most important. Um, you know, so when you're able to do that, that's a, an opportunity for you to reopen your business. And then also from a financial perspective, obviously there's a lot of things going on um, with financially, uh, you know, lease and renegotiations to uh, the PPP loan, a lot of things happening to determine and, and really help our business and, and something that we've been very fortunate that a lot of our clients have been able to take advantage of. But I do think it's important to understand when it makes sense. You just don't want to reopen if, if obviously, if it doesn't make sense financially. So kind of doing the modeling and kind of making sure that you understand, you know, when it makes sense to be able to do that, bring employees back, uh, maximize forgiveness under the PPP loan, and then also, uh, you know, continue to work with your landlords and others to make sure that you or put in the best position to uh, to kind of succeed going forward in this new environment. I think as businesses start to reopen around the country, um, there's obviously the safety issues that everybody is um, putting together right now from the plastic covers to uh, sanitizer. Um, so that's kind of the, the stuff that is the new normal. Um, but I think as businesses start to open, it's really doubling down on what are your operational protocols? What happens if a, um, somebody tests positive? Um, what happens if multiple people test positive? Um, I think one of the main things to consider when opening now is really what the mentality and the culture as the leader of the organization you're going to promote throughout your team. Um, to ensure that uh, through this um, struggle that people don't come back as the victim, but as um, the take charge mentality that um, we got to go out and do business um, and not be the victim. That's, um, you know, to, Champ's, uh, to Champ's point, you know, um, I think doing some scenario planning is uh, is appropriate run through the what ifs and what if as chance of what if someone what if someone gets sick what if multiple people get sick and also what if uh we open and uh and we're open for a in a certain period of time and have to close again or we have to we have to abide by partial restrictions what does that look like what's the plan um everything from you know your your operating procedures to your personnel um, you know, I would suggest running through as many what ifs uh, as possible. So you're as proactive as possible um, versus, uh, you know, reacting. Um, I mean, look, no one can plan. Right now, it's difficult to plan farther than two weeks out for anyone. Um, but, uh, but it's, I think, worth the effort um, to, to go through that process, uh, you know, not only amongst, you know, yourselves and potentially the executive team, but with your, your key uh, managers as well. Um, and then also, you know, keep in mind the basics. If if it's um, you know if masks, if you're going to require masks uh, for, for entry into your business, then have masks available for people that might not have them. Um, I've just I've personally seen some folks turned away um, uh, by businesses, uh, and they might you know those customers uh, probably would have stayed if they had an option to you know put on a mask that was given out. So some of the simple things like that, and uh, and actually. Uh, uh, how about you know coming up with some branded masks and uh, take advantage of of um of that that uh that you know potential marketing situation as well thank you to our strategic partners the village for participating and sharing your perspective do you have a burning question you want to discuss with an expert feel free to submit it via the ask an expert link featured on the page continue to listen to this series now 
or come back later for more. Each question featured may want you to learn something new.